I grew up on this creek. I was born on this creek. My great great grandfather grew up on this creek. When I was young, this uh, creek was our playground. We usually dance on the rain. We usually swim uh, during the uh, rainy season. But today, you cannot imagine the quantity of rain anymore. And uh, the rainfall has changed uh, more than what we have expected. Now we are experiencing flooding and uh, devastation of the buildings. We are ordinary people which are living here. We, we're, we are the first uh, person, we are the first people who are going to be affected. The Earth climate is changing. This is a challenge for many people, especially where people increasingly live, in cities. More and more city authorities around the world are reading the signs of the times. Adapting to this change could be decisive for their future. Eight cities in India and the Philippines have therefore decided to face the challenge. They use scientific findings to develop strategies on how to adapt to the changing climate. In Bonn, Germany, it is hard to sense the threat of the impacts of climate change. The small tranquil city hosts the World Secretariat of ICLE, a global cities network that coordinates Asian Cities Adapt, a project involving these eight cities in Asia. The project brings together science and policy in order to identify the local impacts of climate change and to develop concrete adaptation strategies. The Asian Cities Adapt project is a partnership of cities in India and the Philippines that make good use of scientific knowledge inside an international process, but all in favor of their local climate adaptation strategies. So cities in Asia uh, are uh, basically affected by three threats as far as we know. Uh, it's sea level rise, it's the urban heat island effect, uh, and it is high precipitation. There are others, but these are the big three ones. India boasts 1.2 billion inhabitants. Already a third of them live in cities. Cities that certainly cannot be described as tranquil. Traffic and people everywhere, fast urbanization rates, informal settlements, overloaded infrastructure. Why should a climate adaptation strategy be a priority for those cities? Do climate change impacts particularly challenge urban areas? So climate change uh, will affect all the regions. Definitely it's not cities alone. The villages and rural areas will also be affected. But it is uh, uh, anticipated that uh, cities will be facing more difficulty because more and more people will like to live in the cities. If the weather pattern changes because of the climate change, then obviously there will be more and more stress uh, on the transport sector, for example, and also on the health uh, sector and the power. Power is the most important thing because for better life, uh, people will depend more on the power sector. The uh, cities in Asia have little capacity to respond to these challenges because of governance structure, administrative capacity, and also understanding when it comes to education, for example, knowledge, information, uh, um, how to treat uh, the climate change effects and how to develop adaptation solutions. The basic ingredients for developing such adaptation solutions are translating science for cities and facilitating dialogue with stakeholders. This is the daily business of the ECLE Cities Network. Local action moves the world. So no matter 
what discussions or policies or programs are made at the international or national level, the implementation is always at the local level. And therefore, that understanding of climate change, its potential impacts at the local level is extremely, extremely important. We understand the way cities work, how do they actually take, what is the best way of presenting information to them, how do you, the information, so maybe the softer sides of it, the non-scientific part of it, how do you bring the policy angles into it. And also I try to act as a bridge between the scientific partners and, and in the cities. So we have at the city level like a task force that is formed, which, so which are people from a lot of different departments. And then we have the stakeholder group. So these are key representatives from the city. The risks that the Indian project cities face are diverse. Increased heat waves in Madurai, saltwater intrusion into the groundwater in Vishakhapatnam, consequences of the rising sea level in Kochi, and a combination of sea level rise and extremely heavy rain here in Howrah. These pressures complicate the problems that the cities already have to deal with. To cope with these issues, the Howrah Municipal Corporation seeks external advice, with good reason. The city of Haura, it has a population of about 1.5 million with extremely high developed congestion, with a uh, lot of poverty, a lot of unstructured houses, a lot of other infrastructural problems. So whenever there is a huge climate inflicted problem, Haura is going to be affected. When you visit the city, you will actually see there's these old industries that are there. It's run by the river Ganges, which over there is known as Hooghly. Being an old city, they also have a lot of old infrastructure. And with changing situations, how much of that old infrastructure can actually deal with these changing situations is also an issue. When it comes to uh, climate viability, uh, we have uh, obviously some um, threats that put pressure on this highly complex structure. Uh, and due to the fact that we have so many people living in such a dense area, uh, the effect can be enormous. As part of the Asian Cities Era project, uh, uh, a particular document has been generated, which is called City of Howrah's Communication Strategy for Climate Change Adaptation. And if you look at this document, the two cover photographs actually summed up the story. The front cover photograph, which is basically a, a photograph of people waiting for transport, and the, and, the, and the back one, which is about an inundation water logging. These are the two most important components of climate change expressions in city of power. There are more people than the city can take. Congested roads, overused capacities, outdated infrastructure. These features may be typical for cities in Asia, but additional stresses, like increasingly heavy rain, push people to the edge of the bearable and bring a lot of challenges for the local authority. Migrated people সেখানে নানা জায়গায় তারা স্লাম ডেভেলপ করে তারা সেখানে বসবাস করতে শুরু করে এবং তাদের যে পরিবেশটা দেওয়ার দরকার সেই পরিবেশটা আমরা সেইভাবে দিতে পাচ্ছি না সেখানে নিকাশের সমস্যা আছে সেখানে হেলথ হ্যাজার্ড হচ্ছে অনেক কিছু হচ্ছে দ্য সিটি गवर्नमेंट দে ডিল উইথ দিস ইস্যুস অলমোস্ট অন আ ডে টু ডে বেসিস ফর एग्जांपल ওয়াটার লগিং ইজ নট নিউ ইন হাওড়া সো দে আর অ্যাওয়ার অফ অ্যাবাউট হোয়াটস অলরেডি দি সাম অফ দ্য প্রবলেমস আর but we are trying to bring in just the climate lens into it and saying that if you think you already have a problem, maybe your problem is going to be a lot worse than what you're thinking about it even now. Howrah is located in the Ganges Delta, just a few meters above sea level. Increasingly heavy rains often lead to flooding and living conditions have become increasingly unacceptable. এই জায়গাটা হচ্ছে হরে কৃষ্ণনগর জোয়ারের সময় যেহেতু গঙ্গার সঙ্গে যুক্ত এটা আছে এবং এটা জোয়ার ভাটা খেলে তো জোয়ারের সময় যখন জল বেড়ে যায় তখন সেই জলটা এর ভেতর দিকে ঢুকে যায় 
আর বর্ষাকালে তো এমনি আরও বৃষ্টি যখন যখন হয় তখন সেই জলটাও রয়ে যায় যার ফলে এই এলাকাটা হাঁটু সমান কোমর সমান জল হয়ে যায় এবং ওয়াটার লক পুরো এলাকাটা হয়ে যায় আমরা এই খাটের উপরে রান্না করছি এই জানলা দিয়ে দেখলেন আপনারা খাটের উপরেই আমরা খাটের উপরে রান্না করছি রান্না করছি আমাদের কি অবস্থা বাচ্চা কাচ্চা বেরোতে পারছে না বাচ্চা নামতে পারছে না আমাদের খুব পরিস্থিতি খারাপ ঢুকে যাচ্ছে সাপ ঢুকে গেছিল আমাদের ঘরে সাপ ঢুকে যাচ্ছে আমরা রান্না বান্না করছি জিনিসপত্র সব সব জলে ভাসছে জলে ভাসছে অবস্থা তারপর একজন করে রোজগারি ঘরে তার তো অফিস কাজেটা যে যাবে কি করে যাবে এক হাঁটু করে জল গামছা পরে ওখানে গিয়ে কয়নার ধারে গিয়ে প্যান্ট পরে তারপরে যাবে If these are the impacts of climate change in an official residential area like Hare Krishna Naga, one can imagine how unofficial neighborhoods such as in the industrial district of Haura are affected. According to the World Bank, more than 20% of India's population live below the poverty line. Their life takes place on the street. It is these people who suffer most from the impacts of climate change. Tackling the adaptation challenge often requires thinking about basic problems in societies. Potsdam, Telegraph Hill, a place with a scientific tradition. Among the renowned scientific institutes located here is the Potsdam Institute for Climate Impact Research, a partner of the Asian Cities ADAPT project. Climate scientists are increasingly focusing on cities. Can their research be useful for sustainable urban development? The climate change challenge is relevant for cities from two points of view. The first thing is that uh, cities are victims, so they are affected by extreme events like heavy rain, uh, heat waves or even by sea level rise. Uh, on the other hand, cities are also um, the originators of a lot of uh, greenhouse gas emissions, so it's estimated that 70% of all global emissions are coming from cities. So that means, in other words, cities are the perfect test bed where we can uh, reconcile adaptation and mitigation needs. Climate change uh, model projections play an important role for the definition of adaptation needs in cities. In principle, we have two kinds of uh, model approaches which can help us to inform stakeholders. Uh, one is a more statistical approach, which of course needs data from meteorological services. The other one is a more uh, dynamical approach, similar to that what the global model provides us, but with a much smaller grid size. Uncertainty is related to the different climate change projections. So these climate change projections are related to concrete assumptions how humanity will develop in the next 100 years and nobody can forecast this. Uh, with this bandwidth um, uh, the local stakeholders have to deal um, and uh, on the basis of these uh, yeah, scenarios they can provide ideas how a city should adapt in the future. What does this look like on the ground? Within the project, also four cities in the Philippines are meeting the challenge by using the results of the scientific partners when developing adaptation strategies. Just about everything in the Philippines is close to the ocean. On the archipelago, vulnerability to climate change is immediately apparent. Extreme weather events, for example, are affecting Philippine cities already. The four project cities exemplify tailored ways to adapt. We wanted these four cities for the project because a lot of local governments in the Philippines and in other parts of Southeast Asia are similarly located. So we wanted to, to present, I mean, uh, showcase the different experiences of the cities and how they can replicate it also in their respective cities. Local governments have limited resources to use for climate change impacts because there are competing issues like poverty, uh, transport, 
uh, health services, education, etc. Adaptation is about hard measures and technical measures, but it's much about learning, understanding to work with each other and to understand that whatever we do is under the condition of uncertainty. The uncertainty debate is a very important one, uh, but this does not mean that we cannot act. So this means um, we have a choice, so we have a possibility space of potential options, but how the climate will develop in the future depends on our decisions now. Deciding on measures to reduce CO2 emissions is therefore the key to avoid unmanageable climate change. This should also be part of adaptation strategies to manage the unavoidable. At the Climate Change Commission, we meet one of the lead authors for the IPCC report on managing the risks of extreme events and disasters to advance climate change adaptation. The local government can be convinced to adapt to climate change if these activities can also address the current problems. Yeah, so, if we start from addressing um, the disaster risk, reduction, which is the concern now. And as we move towards the future, we address the long-term changes in the averages. Because if you talk with people, they don't understand the changes in the average, but they do understand the extreme events because they are happening now. Social equity should be inclusive, not only uh, looking at the benefits for climate change, but also in terms of improving the craft of the, the communities. Ultimately, it is all about the people who are affected. And those who suffer most can also benefit most from wise adaptation measures. In order to succeed, it is crucial that local leaders like mayors support the development of an adaptation strategy. Like in the city of Baguio, the summer capital of the Philippines, high up in the Cordillera in the Luzon tropical pine forests region. So, uh, we can see now the real effect of climate change. So, that alone can uh, tell you and deliver to you the lesson that this is a serious problem that you must to be involved as an individual, including that as a family or a uh, barangay is a collective concern of, of not only us in government, but including those in the private sectors. What measures will prepare a city for a changing climate? After some obvious first steps that have been taken, how can further major investments be secured for the future? Baguio City has chosen to join the project to get answers to these questions. Well, we have reached a point in our development that we need to have more scientific basis to come up with decisions for prioritization and allocation. It was not easy understanding uh, the scientists' inputs, but somehow um, these have become very interesting and more or less you have a, a very, very precise basis uh, to explain also to people that this is happening. In addition to a close dialogue with scientists, the exchange between cities is one of the characteristics of the project. The Kekarao city is located in northeast Luzon. It's in a valley. And we joined this project because valleys are very vulnerable. We took it as a learning chance and also to serve as a model. Actually, just last Friday, we had an environment summit, and I presented all the results of Asian Cities Adopt. And they were so impressed that we were able to present 41 years of data, and we were able to show three scenarios, which will be included in our comprehensive land use plan and our comprehensive development plan. It can really be the best if this is taken as a local priority do not wait from the order from the national government to tell you, you must do this. We must do it also by our own, as our own priority and program. Allowing climate impact research to inform decisions for the future is one important ingredient to finding wise ways to adapt. Incorporating the experience and wisdom of local people is another important aspect. 
the Center for uh, Research on Climate Change in the University of Philippines Barrio uh, was born uh, out of the need to respond to the growing environmental crisis in the Philippines and the, and the, the, the impacts of climate change on, on us, no, as a people in the city and, uh, and, and the region. We know that climate change is a natural phenomenon, but we also know that it's a result of social activities. So we have to, to bring this knowledge back to the community and get knowledge from them as well. And there has to be this continuing dialogue with community and, and the university. We cannot operate in isolation from them. The Barangay Lourdes is a good example that shows how crucial it is to involve the local community in the adaptation process. Until very recently, the area had been repeatedly inundated. The change in how the land is used has made the area prone to flooding. The captain of the barangay explains how the problem was solved. And this used to be a plantation area, you could uh, imagine. But somehow in the 1980s and the 1990s, people start building their houses. So that contributed to the flooding of the area. That becomes now the area susceptible of flooding. Because one that contributes is the garbage being thrown to the area. So the government must have to build concrete canals to allow the free flow of water. And that will also explain that the people can easily clean the garbage being thrown by people who don't care about the environment. The heavy rainfall uh, was not actually experienced in the past. It was only sometime in the 2001 and 2009 where there is a heavy rainfall. So we believe in the community that this has something to do with climate change. Previously, trash clogged the sinkhole during heavy rain, causing flooding. Today, this is prevented by an interplay of channels, bar screens to retain large objects, and by the population maintaining them. This is the uh, sinkhole where water coming from upper barangays, they allow the flow of water to stay here. It overflows because of the garbage being thrown by the households, so there is a need to construct a drainage canal in order not to allow flooding in the area. The city of Dagupan is located at the Lingayan Gulf in Pangasinan province. The local milkfish industry is affected by climate change, endangering the livelihoods of many people in Dagupan. But adaptation is taking place. Once the problems and response options are identified, it is often simple measures that do the trick. The mangroves that we planted was initially to really reinforce the river banks. Initially, they are used to protect our fish pond dikes and we really protect our industry that produce the very famous bangus that we pride ourselves of. I think at this point, the city of Dagupan would be very grateful for the people who help us study and learn the real situation of the city. Now we know we are equipped with better information that will give us better decisions and make wise use of the little resources that we have. Using resources wisely can protect industry, but even more importantly, it can save people's life. The boundaries between adaptation and disaster risk reduction are fluid. This is apparent in Dagupan's Barangay Mangin, it was flooded several times, people died. But now the barangay found a way to manage flooding with a structured and effective approach with the help of the city and the people. This is where we evacuate the people of Mangin in, uh, in case of flooding and or calamity. The, our river is connected in the sea. sea. That's why we, we experience also the high tide. We created this uh, 3D map. And this green uh, represents the rice field, and that is a fish farm. We can easily identify who will uh, first to evacuate. Simple, but effective in saving lives.
you can see this uh, this line over here is our uh, our uh, blood marker. This is what I'm used, I'm used to tell you that we have an uh, water level about here. A solid scientific basis, a moderated process for decision making, cooperation between the city and its population, exchange of experiences. Bringing all of this together can make adaptation succeed. As in the city of San Fernando, where the mayor acted because he knows that adaptation is not only beneficial for the poor, but also makes good economic sense. Most of those uh, poor people here, especially here in uh, the Philippines, they live uh, along the uh, coastal areas because uh, most of them are fishermen. So when there are typhoon or there are uh, storm surge and everything, they're the first uh, affected. So uh, every time there is a big storm and everything, the city government uh, spends a lot of money helping them to, you know, to start again. Mangroves help in uh, prevention of erosion, especially along the river banks. Uh, we started uh, mangrove planting at least twice a year. The mangrove before was not thick as like this. It was uh, thin. There was no regulation. Everybody can cut it off. There were so many illegal structures here. And I was one of them, <laughs> of course. Because we thought that uh, putting up illegal structures here can add up to our income. But we didn't uh, realize that we are polluting the river. So. The mayor organized us and uh, make, made us an organization. We call it the Green Creek Multipurpose Cooperative. The main purpose of the cooperative is to safeguard whatever it costs, to safeguard the mangroves which are planted along the banks. In five years' time, we planted mangroves which can protect our river. Climate change impacts are real, but we don't have to be at their mercy. An adaptation strategy can strengthen a sustainable city development. Many cities worldwide have meanwhile embarked on such kind of an ambitious endeavor. They advise and assist each other to prepare for the future, as well as to benefit the people living in the city today. It is not necessarily just a project output that we are focusing on, but we are looking at a project process. So what we also are trying to um, streamline and inculcate within the cities is the whole process of saying that we need to get a better understanding of what the baseline situation is, to bring in the stakeholder engagement process, to make it more robust and have more social acceptability of the issues that are coming in. It's not actually only the city working on climate change adaptation, but it's also the, the people living in the cities, uh, especially the vulnerable sectors which cannot really cope up with, with uh, the impacts of climate change. A learning experience from the Asian City Adapt project is uh, that cooperation and interaction with different stakeholders in such a complex process is very helpful and beneficial because it improves uh, both the process and its results for climate adaptation at the local level.